Now I'll create a new model and add some content to it to show you different code editing abilities of RubyMine. To start off, I'll double press Ctrl to open the Run Editing action. This action can be used to run any configuration, script, command, rig tasks, Rails generators, and even console commands. I can just start by typing something like Rails G model, or instead I could just insert model, and RubyMine will understand that I'm looking for a model generator and suggest it in the completion list. I'll press Enter and see the UI wrapper for the model generator. The same one you will discover for the controller, migration and other generators. Here I can provide the name of my model, which will be POST, and its fields. Content. Now, as you can see, RubyMine provides code auto completion for field types. The other field will be Picture, Type String. I can also provide additional options. I'll skip and hit OK. The IDE will run the generator, open the run tool window, showing me the result of my command, and allowing me to navigate to every created file. It will also open the migration file and the post model in the editor by default. Let me close the run tool window. And now I'm ready to add some content to my newly created model. Let's now add a couple of associations. First of all, let's make our post belong to user through the belongs to association. As RubyMine indexes your application on each startup, it later provides you with a number of code inside features, like code auto completion for classes, methods, and other entities declared in your application or in Ruby Rails and other gems. So this is how you get the auto completion for belongs to in particular. Let's auto complete it. RubyMine is also smart enough to understand that we are looking for a model here, and indeed we are looking for the user model. So let's auto complete it as well. The sample app uses the gem carrier wave to upload pictures. And to associate pictures with our model, we'll need to use a custom method from this gem called mount uploader. And as you can see, as this gem is installed for our application, RubyMine suggests to autocomplete this method as well. Code autocompletion is not the only code inside feature of RubyMine. One of the most important abilities that RubyMine has is the ability to navigate to the definition of any entity declared inside or outside of your application. For example, we can quickly navigate to the definition of the user model. To do that, we'll hover over the name of the model and press Ctrl or Command depending on your operating system and click on it. OK, now we are moved to the model and we can add an association here as well. Similarly, we can navigate to the definition of the belongs to association, like this. So now we are moved to the active record gem file associations rb. Let me show you that in the project tool window. So we are outside of our application, in the external libraries, gem active record, file associations rb. And similarly, we could navigate to this method, which is the gem carrier wave file, active record, rb, and so on and so forth. Let's now add a method that will check the size of our picture and provide an error if the picture is oversized. We'll call it picture size. Picture.size is more than 5 megabytes. Now it seems that I have two similarly looking methods here. What if I'm not sure which one I should use? Instead of googling for each of these methods, to see the documentation, I can press F1 and see quick docs for each of these methods, right in the IDE. So the method megabytes returns the number of bytes equivalent to the megabytes provided. And this is the method I'm looking for. And the second one is just an alias for the first one, so I can use any of these. Now, it also seems that I forgot to make it an if statement, but instead of going back in code, I'll just insert dot and type if, which will allow me to wrap this line with an if statement, like this. This feature is called postfix code completion, and it allows you to supplement, alter, or invert your statements without going back in code. You can see the list of all postfix code templates in the settings, both for JavaScript and Ruby. 
You can also discover what they will look like and enable and disable the ones you want. OK, let's now just finish the method. Let's now re-enable Rubicop to see if we have any code style violations in our file. Apparently we have a couple of issues. To see an error description on every line, you can go to the right part of the editor and navigate to every highlight. You can also hover over the highlighted text and see the error description there. Finally, if you don't want to use the mouse, you can just press F2 to go to every next error in the file, and then just press Command F1 or Control F1 to see the error description. In this particular case, the problem is that I'm using double quoted strings instead of single quoted strings. And to fix that with Rubicop, I can press Alt Enter and fix all Rubicop offenses in the file, or fix them by type of offense or by cop department. Let's fix all Rubicop issues in this file. Great, this problem disappears, but we still have a couple of issues left. First of all, here we have a multi-line statement instead of a one-liner. Unfortunately, Rubicop doesn't provide a quick fix for that, but RubyMind does. To access it, let's press Alt-Enter again. And as you can see, we can convert this statement to modifier, meaning that we can make this if statement a one-line statement. Let's press Enter. And as you can see, this error disappears. Still, we have a couple of irritating issues according to Rubicop. First of all, this line is now too long. Another problem is that we don't have a documentation comment for our class. To get rid of these issues, let's create an additional Rubicop configuration file. To do that, we'll go to the root of our project and create a Rubicop configuration file. .rubicop.yml RubyMine will ask us whether we want to add the new file to Git. We'll press yes for now but we'll discover VCS features a little bit later. Let's add additional rules to get rid of the irritating issues. Let's get back to the model. I'll manually save the file to apply the changes faster. And as you can see, RubyMine respects the Rubicop configuration file, so these errors disappear. Let's see what else RubyMine can do for us. You've probably noticed, by the way, that somehow I managed to close all the files, but not the one that's currently open in the editor. To do that, hover over the tab, hold Alt, and click the Close button. And now you've got rid of all the files, but not one that is currently open in the editor. But I'll close this file for now as well, because I don't need it anymore. And I'll close the project tool window as well. Now I want to navigate to my user model. To do that, I can use another handy pop-up, which is called Recent Files. That's Command E or Control E, depending on your operating system. This one allows you to navigate to recently opened files. As you expect, search works here as well, so I can do something like this. But there is also a similar pop-up, which is called Recently Edited Files. And as you remember, we did edit our user model before, as we added an association there. So we can open it from here, like this. Let's polish some stuff at first. Here we have some Rubicop issues we can get rid of. And here is another good case for using intention actions in RubyMine. We have a regular expression here that checks if a user provides an invalid email address. So to check this regular expression, we can press Alt Enter again and choose Check Regexp and provide some samples. This one doesn't match. This one doesn't match either. How about something like name at email.com? Okay, this one matches. Great, so this is how it works. Here we can also replace the class name uh, with self. And also let's get rid of this turnover operator here that shouldn't be used for multi-line statements. So let's make it an if and statement. So we have a somewhat thick model here, and to navigate between its methods faster, we can use the file structure pop-up, 
This pop-up allows you to navigate between different methods in a file and search works here as well. So we can try and go to some of our private methods like this. As you can see, we have extra indentation for our private methods. And by default, Rubicop considers this a code style violation. So I've edited my configuration file to get rid of this offense. The reason I did that is that many developers actually prefer to add extra indentation for their private and protected methods. As for the code style, RubyMine provides a built-in code formatter, which reformats your code according to the Ruby style guide and according to some options that you can tweak in the settings. To reformat your code, you can go to Code, Reformat Code, or use a shortcut. And as you can see, RubyMine has reformatted our private methods and made them in line with the rest of the methods. By the way, if you only choose, for example, this particular method and press uh, the reformat action again, RubyMine will only reformat this particular selection. The reason RubyMine didn't dance our private methods is that that's what it is supposed to do now according to the settings. So if we go to the settings, look for the code style, we need one for the Ruby language. However, there is also a number of code style options for different languages and technologies. But here in the Ruby section, as you can see, we can choose whether we want to add extra indentation for our private and protected methods. And the preview pane also shows you what's going to be changed. There are other code style options as well. For example, you can add spaces around hash rockets, curly braces and blocks and hashes, and some other things as well. Let's hit apply and OK. Let's reform it our code again. And as you can see now, RubyMine adds extra indentation for our private methods. So this is how the code formatter works in RubyMine. Let's now take a look at some other user-related things. To do that, we can go to Navigate, Related Symbol, which will open up a pop-up that will show us all the user-related entities. So there's a user's controller, a helper, a number of views and tests. Let's navigate to the controller. Apparently, we have a number of Rubicop issues here, as usual. Let's fix all of them at once. We have a number of Rails actions here. By the way, to navigate between different actions and methods, you can use Control up and down errors or Alt up and down errors depending on your operating system. So it looks like often we do the same thing for different actions. We find a user in the database by its ID and we assign it to an instance variable user. Instead of that, why don't we just refactor this piece of code to its own method? To do that, we'll go to the refactor menu and choose the refactor this pop-up. As you can see, RubyMine provides a number of different refactorings. For example, you can extract variables, constants, fields. All of these actions have their own shortcuts. We'll go with the extract method refactoring. Let's click on it. We can make the new method a private one, a public one, or a protected one. Let's make it private. Let's also provide a name for it. Get user. Click OK. RubyMine will find all the actions that use the same piece of code we've just refactored to its own method. If we click Yes, we can apply the new method for each action one by one, or for all of them at once. So our new method is located right into the private section. Here it is. And all the Rails actions use the new method instead of the previous code fragment. However, we still have a small problem here. Apparently, we shouldn't prefix reader methods with get, as it's a code style violation. So we'll need to rename it to something else. We don't have to manually do that, as RubyMine has a refactoring for that as well, which is called rename. So if we press Shift F6, we can rename this method to something else. For example, take user, hit refactor. RubyMine will find all the usages, and if we hit do refactor, it will just rename the method with all of its usages, like this. And as you can see, this method is now called take user in all the Rails actions. Finally, we probably do not want to use the same method in a number of actions. So 
Obviously, it's a duplication, so all we have to do is to make it a filter, a before filter. Let's go up here, and let's duplicate this line, like this. That's Command-D, or Control-D, depending on your operating system. Let's make this method a before filter now. Take user. As you can see, code completion is available, of course. Now I do not remember all the actions that use this method. So I can manually find all of its usages again. To do that, I'll hit Alt F7. So as you can see, the following actions use this method. Edit, followers, following, show, and update. Great, let's add them. Finally, we now can get rid of all the occurrences of take user, as we don't need them anymore, because we now have a before filter. We don't have to do that manually, though. All we need to do is select one occurrence of take user, and then press Ctrl-G or LJ, dependent on the operating system. And then press the shortcut again and again to choose all the occurrences of take user in the file. Like this. However, it seems that we also selected the definition of the method take user, which we probably do not want to erase. So we need to unselect it. To do that, we'll use the same shortcut, but also press Shift, like this. And now all we have to do is just press Command Backspace to get rid of all the unneeded calls of the take user method. Finally, let's press Escape to escape from multiple cursors. 